think I'm damaged goods. I'm worried about losing my job. Will I ever get a transplant? I want to see my children graduate from college. How can I afford this? I don't want to be a burden. I'm afraid. I'm overwhelmed with information. Sometimes I wonder if I'll ever fall in love and get married. I just want to play with my friends. You're listening to Kidney Talk, streaming health, happiness, and hope to the renal community with your hosts, Lori Hartwell and Stephen First. Well, we're here with another episode of Kidney Talk. Stephen, it's great to be back. Yes, I was in Eastern Europe. Can you believe that? How was that? that? It was, you know, it was hard to uh, stay on a renal-friendly diet in Eastern Europe. What's the biggest issue Lots of Lots of cheese there, which I love cheese. Yeah, Yeah. just lots of cheese. Well, today we have a very special guest. His name is Dr. Philip Tussaud, and he's a board-certified nephrologist from Lancaster, California, and he works for for Fresenius Medical Care. That's right, Lancaster. Lancaster. Or everybody, if you don't know where that is, is about an hour and a half out of Los Angeles. And you know what? You can tell by like people's last names where they're from. Like you know, Caparelli would be from Italy and stuff. So Tussaud, you could tell that he was from Lancaster. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the show, Doctor Tussaud. Well, thank you. It's such an honor and privilege to be here. Well, well what is Tussaud anyway? Is that French or what is that? I think it's originally French. It like is Madame Tussaud. Madame Tussaud. But, oh, wow. uh, Isn't that Trousseau? Yeah. Right. But so it's Trousseau, Tussaud. Tussaud. It's spelled a lot oh, different. You're in your name because you were embarrassed of your French heritage? I think that happened. They (laughs) migrated to Italy, actually to Sicily. And then when they came to the United States, I think it was part of that transition from Italy to United States, the name oh, got But shortened. I love Madame Tussaud. Have you ever been there? I have not. Oh, it's great. All these wax figures and everything. They even have a wax kidney there. And it, it's amazing how it looks so real. <laughs> wow. So well, we're going to talk about nutrition today, yes, which is nutrition. one of my favorite subjects. I know. Uh, there's so many things you have to learn when you are a patient. Uh, so why don't you tell us some of the basics? What's the number one issue that patients have to learn about nutrition? Well, I think there's several number ones. Okay. Um, Certainly, (laughs) my passion has been in protein nutrition because there's such a high correlation between comorbidities and mortality or doing well, living longer based on your protein levels in your blood. And why is protein? Explain what protein is. I mean, I know that it's measured by your albumin. Is that correct? Correct. So most people don't know that, but a lot of our patients now, every month we tell them their albumin levels. Is that your BUN? Is that the same thing or is that something different? The BUN is your blood urea nitrogen, Ah. which is a breakdown product of too much protein, which was a big controversy probably 10 years ago is whether we should restrict or give more protein in the diet for kidney patients. So it's a very interesting topic. So so with protein, basically, you need protein when you're on hemodialysis because hemodialysis, the process breaks it down, correct, the protein? Every day we break down proteins and build them up. So we need a certain amount of protein in our diet to make sure that our uh, muscles are strong and that our immune system is intact. So it, it seems that when our protein levels go down, our immune system starts to deteriorate or be less effective and we're more susceptible to in infections and, and sickness and other things too. Now, so, are certain types of proteins better than others? Like there's steak and then there's soybeans and then there's eggs. Are, are they all the same? Do they all end up being the same? Well, I think protein is protein. Mm-hmm. Protein is made up of amino acids. So mm-hmm. basically when we eat protein, it breaks it down to amino acids. We absorb those and then we make the proteins that we need. And it so doesn't the, answer, matter. the answer to your question is, is a good one because uh, steak is a great source of protein, but come, what comes with that is cholesterol. Cholesterol so and have, fat. Oh, okay. And fat. So we have to kind of balance uh, the type of protein. So certainly leaner meats, fish, chicken, uh, are probably a better alternative for protein. And what about soy? Soy is a good source of protein, although it's an animal protein. And um, it's soy is an animal protein. Soy is from I mean not animal plant protein. Sorry. Oh, I was going to say. Right. What are you talking? I, 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 I was had checking. A, I, had a I was testing to see if you were listening. No, I had a pet soy one time. A pet soy. <laughs> yeah. Protein is really important because when you're on dialysis, you lose your appetite and you just stop eating sometimes. I've seen that with a lot of patients. I was ravenous. You were hungry, but I've heard that sometimes people just lose their appetite and they don't eat as much. Do you get that from some of your patients? We think of it as residual renal function, and certainly the two of you are probably very knowledgeable of this. As we still retain our residual renal function, I think we retain our appetite in those things. But as uh, we go on dialysis, uh, we start dialysis when our 
kidney function is about 15% or 10% if you don't have diabetes. And as that starts to go down, I think a lot of the symptoms of renal failure come in. And one of them is lack of appetite. And maybe you're nauseous more of the time, nausea and maybe vomiting even. And so you don't eat as much and you become malnourished. And one of the signs of malnutrition would be a low uh, albumin level in your blood or a very low cholesterol level too. And well, we can I monitor know, those. I know I was nauseous before I went on dialysis. You know, when I needed dialysis, but was kept saying, no, I don't need it. I'm fine. I'm fine. But when I know that I would go and when I was on dialysis, in the middle of dialysis, I'd get starving. You know, the, the lady next to me always mm -hmm. brought snacks, right? <laughs> I always stole them because she would always fall asleep. So she'd wake up and she'd go, where's my peanut butter sandwich? I said, you didn't bring one of the peanut butter sandwich in. You know? Is there a reason why you get more hungry as the treatment progresses? Or is it just because you've been sitting in the chair for a couple of hours? I don't know if there's an evidence-based answer for that, but I think uh, there is some evidence that we lose protein during dialysis. And some of those amino acids are filtered out and actually by the end of dialysis, our protein level in our body is probably a little bit less. And I think some of the evidence has been for that is that if we replace supplements during dialysis that we mm -hmm. can prevent album levels from deteriorating or malnutrition from continuing. You're prone to infection and then it just costs uh, so much more problems for you down the lines. I mean that proves my point. The lady next to me lost protein <laughs> during dialysis. Because you took her peanut butter I sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> well what is the second number one um, issue when it re in regards to nutrition? Well there's, there's two ways to go with that. One is life threatening which would be potassium. It's, it's not a problem most of the time, but uh, people can die from having a very high potassium level. And there's and no so warning sign of it. That's I, urgent. I actually had my heart stopped for six minutes when I was 13 years old from oh, a high, high potassium. potassium. And it le it measured at 10.5. Mo holy moly, that's a lot. And I mean, but there's no warning signs. You don't like get chest pain. Your heart just stops, right? It just well, stops. It just stop I actually felt very heavy before. Uh -huh. I felt this incredible heaviness where I didn't want to pick up my body it was just like I wanted to slide out of the chair it was this and you incredible remember this I remember feeling? it so vividly I can't even so where tell were you. you were there people around I was to help sitting you on or? a couch talking to a doctor I was having a lot of problems oh, you had a doctor but it was actually another doctor no it was another doctor and then I I was seeing another doctor with my mom and I was about 15 minutes from Children's Hospital and I was sitting on the couch and I literally started to just feel like I wanted to slide out of the couch and lay on the ground flat you know they called Dr. Fine immediately and said get her to children's and I kind of remember the drive but my mom said I was hallucinating I kept saying let's go get my little black dog and drive off the cliff I don't know I don't remember that and when we got there I saw the hospital and I just opened the, the door of the car when it was moving and fell out on the pavement and I had this dress on. This sounds and like I, a lifetime movie. I, I think it is. And I remember this, you know, the hot asphalt on my legs, but I couldn't move. Yeah, but this you're saying that your heart stopped. That and then means, about uh, 10 minutes later, when I was in, in a treatment room, they didn't know what was wrong with me. This was like seven, late 70s. And they didn't know, you know, they couldn't. And, and basically, I, I, I coded at the hospital. So that's probably why I'm here, but they, they said it took six minutes to get my heart back. So working. it was the late 70s, and you had that reputation anyway, you know, with the bad <laughs> I was a heart stopper. What could I say, you know? Yeah. I just, well, no, I mean, with the, the several bad acid trips you had I, taken exactly, before. Exactly, at 13, <laughs> at I was 13, yeah, out on yeah. the streets. But anyway, so I definitely understand the potassium, and from that point on, I was so afraid. And it ended up being that, you know, there was some, a, a bath was put on wrong. I didn't have my own kidneys, so it was over the weekend, and, and I was on a new peritoneal dialysis machine. So there was a lot of things going on that they didn't quite understand. So, yeah, I'm lucky to be here. <laughs> well, that's a great example of the effects of high potassium. Yes, right? and it, it you, don't even, you don't even feel it. You just feel heavy. It's yeah, that's different. what I'm saying. I think the danger is, is you don't feel something coming on. It just stops. 
Right. And, and then basically what I heard is, isn't it just like paralyze your muscles? Stops your muscles. So your heart stops. So do you think that's what was happening to me when I felt heavy? Like my muscles were slowly becoming fatigued. And exactly. It just, right. And that's what the heaviness was from. And isn't, right. don't they shoot potassium? I know this is totally off the subject, but <laughs> don't they shoot potassium into lethal injections? Isn't that that's what correct. it is? That's correct. That's one of the yeah. ways of uh, lethal. But that just shows how important uh, <laughs> potassium is and how Absolutely. Uh, people on dialysis have to be very mm-hmm. alert and aware of the potassium intake. Right. And it's funny, in nutritional uh, you know, advertisements to sell products, they say a good source of potassium You know, for people who actually want potassium. Potassium. You know. Well, for athletes, that's they need the potassium because they're burning up their muscles, they're sweating, right. and uh, they need extra potassium to replace what they're losing. That's why uh, nutritional supplements are so dangerous for people on di- dialysis. Like People say, take this special nutritional supplement. That's why you always have to check with your doctor because... Because it could have potassium or something in it. That's correct. Is that correct? That's one of the important components they have to be careful of. You have to find out which ones are right for you. Right. So what's the next issue after potassium? Well, the next one is phosphorus. I know. Good old phosphorus. Jeez, we're back to your cheese. Cheese. There's different phosphate binders. Phosphate binders, right. And and so, but that doesn't, does that give you, can you eat more uh, cheese (laughs) if you have these phosphate binders? Well, it's a a double-edged sword as far as the phosphate phosphate binders. Our, mm-hmm. our advice and counsel is to try to avoid the phosphorus foods. Which is everything though, isn't Which it? Which is all milk products and ice and cream, beans. cheese. And what about beans? Beans. Too? beans uh, anything good. Anything all good. All the comfort uh, foods. Cereals. What uh, doesn't have phosphate in it? Ah, uh, let's see. Yeah, that's hard I to think define. it's Jello. It's Jello. It's Jello. It's that's Jello. Great. That's, that's what it is. I found a food that doesn't have phosphorus in it. Yeah. So, haven't they said that if you spend more time on dialysis, it helps your phosphorus a little bit? Isn't that been shown? Well, it does. And, and patients, we often have patients at very, very high phosphorus levels, and we'll we'll give them extra treatment to try to bring it down. What so, are the side um, effects of uh, having, I mean, what are the, if you have high phosphorus, what are the dangers of having high phosphorus? The main danger is weak bones and mm-hmm. increased risk for fractures. Mm-hmm. And then uh, also is what we call metastatic calcification, where as your phosphorus goes up, it binds to calcium in your blood and mm-hmm. forms bone tissue all over your body. Could be in your heart, it could be in your skin. Mm. Could be in your brain. So it could be be anywhere. You'd be like Elephant Man. You'd be like Bone Man. Bone Bone Man. man. And your heart heart can calcify, right? Your heart can calcify. Actually, some of the commercials show a calcified heart for a reason to take your phosphate binders. Oh, really? And it's like a hard rock in your heart? And one of the questions is with your phosphate binders, you need to take them like within like 15 minutes of when you eat. Is that what I've heard? That's right. With your snacks. Before Mm -hmm. or after? And not to take them with your medications because they can block the absorption of your medication. So that's why it's good. That's interesting. I've never heard that. Yeah. So you, I mean, literally you have so many different medications you have to take. You have to make sure your phosphate binders aren't with your like blood pressure medications. Correct. So. Well, you learn something every day on the show. That's I true. mean, it is. It's amazing. That's why I, I mean, tune in and listen to it. Because <laughs> I sleep Because I recording. wonder how many patients take their phosphate binders with other medications. Yeah, I think we should, should try to keep them separate. So keep them closer to your food, separate from your medication so they don't uh, block it's the It's so hard, but then you have to add another regimen to the day <clears throat> of, you know, I mean, you're taking a lot of medications. And so if you take like two blood pressure pills a day and then you're taking phosphate binders three times a day or four times a day, that means you're taking medication six or seven times a day. Yeah, the phosphate binders have become a, a very important issue because they're very expensive. Too. So the Are more there, you take, no generic for them. Uh, there's no uh, generic ones for the ones, uh, the non-calcium based ones right. yet. Uh, we use Tums or calcium carbonate, which is right. over the counter. Um, that's that's kind of generic. But if you're know, trying. Sometimes you don't want to get too much calcium in your body if you take too many phosphate binders. That's right. Because right. we have to balance our phosphorus with our parathyroid hormone levels. Right. And if they're high, then our calcium starts to rise. And it's the... And then we get secondary hyperparathyroidism. There's right. just too much to remember. <laughs> there's a lot to remember. And you know, it's, it's t- difficult because people just want to live their lives. And that's why, you know, really on this show, we try to 
figure out how to do it simplified you know this is a lifestyle show and we it's just hard because I know I would go out to uh, dinner or lunch or something I go oh I left the binders in the car and I'm certainly not going to you know go back and get the binders you know because you know I park a block away or you know you don't want to pay for parking I don't want to pay for parking again <laughs> you know so it's uh, yeah I don't want to pay for parking so I, 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 I circle the block looking for a meter that has uh, time I'm left on it so but you know that's it's very difficult it's it's you know for somebody who's had a kind of free lifestyle to be so regimented it's very very difficult and then if you add diabetes on top of it which is you got to be more regimented and so what do you eat <laughs> so I guess what if you were sitting down for a really good meal and had to stay within all of the guidelines what would you choose well, there's a lot of great products on the market. There's a lot of nutritional supplements that are made specifically for patients with renal failure. And a lot of, often they are a, a meal replacement. So you could have those for your lunch or for a late dinner or sometimes in the morning too. A supplement, so I think you mean? A nutritional supplement. Like You, you sit uh, down and this is the good meal she was talking about? Like you sit down with... It can be a meal replacement. Or it can be a but supplement I think she's you. talking about like ha sitting and having a um, meal with like guests. Right. So I think the main focus, should, the center of your meal should be your proteins. So like a chicken, so chicken or, fish or fish and make it in garlic or olive oil, something right, that's... Right, your spices. There's a lot spices. of spices now that are good. So it's going to talk Try. about what we can eat so we can figure out how to have a proper diet. Right. There's a lot of really good spices and some products on the market that add flavor without the salt right. that we can have. Is that, that like... Like Mrs. Dash. Exactly stuff. right. But don't they have high potassium? Mrs. Dash, I don't think is high in potassium. Oh. No. So, yeah, I always used to love to make lemon chicken because that was always refreshing with some rice and some steamed green beans with a little butter and a, a, a whole wheat biscuit. And right. I was really uh, And a lot sad. of people don't know, we, you know, they hear they can't take potatoes or you can't eat potatoes. Right. But, but there's a way if you if you peel the potato and you dialyze the you potato soak overnight. You the potato, yeah. Overnight, you punch little holes potato. in it, then you can oh, have so your potato. You're, you're leaching actually the don't potassium need to put the potato on the it. machine. You don't have to hook it up to the machine. No, right? oh, wow. you leach the potato potassium out of it and then you right. cook them I you know I did that you for can, years but that's you can cook it anyway right? you can, well like, no you just have to think you know you have to prepare so you take so the potato fast, and you put it in water you put it in water and you, you let it, it soak you peel it uh huh put it in water you slice and, it up put it in the water and let it sit overnight and yes. then that's dialyzing the potato it, yes. it leaches out the potassium like Lori said so if I sat in a bathtub all night, would I be able to skip dialysis? <laughs> no. We'd have to peel you first. Yeah. I see. I know. It would be interesting if you could just sit in a... Uh, well, some people think if they sit in a sauna <laughs> that they are getting all the... the toxins out. I've heard that on many occasions, but I think it's just good for your complexion. I don't think it really can help get rid of potassium. So, so foods, <laughs> obviously we know oranges and bananas and potatoes. And, and, and avocados. Avocados and tomatoes. And tomatoes, right. Right. Are high I think in that's potassium. the hardest one for people. And tomatoes? Mangoes during mangoes. the summer seasons are the hard, very hard. Right. But cherries and blueberries are good. Cherries yeah, lemon, and blueberries. And lemon and is good. And lemon. apple is apple. good. Oh, I'd apple love juice. to sit down and eat a lemon. Do you know it's, how many types of apple there are? On the market, I've been amazed. There's like jazz apples. Oh no, are we? Are you I not going to list them now? Are you? Well, I could if you want. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so there's lots of apple choices. Yeah, and they're different right? flavors. They're, it's it's really fun to check different out different flavors of apple. Yes, you got You know, you go to the they're supermarket. They're all those apple flavor. Right? <laughs> they're all apple. You what do you mean different flavors? You go to the supermarket flavors? and you see like a whole row of apples. Yeah, but they're not and different all flavors. Of them have, yes, they are. I'm telling you. B blueberry apples. Well, no, they have. They're Chocolate different, apples. They're different. Well, you can dip them in chocolate. Different types of apples. Chocolate's not flavors. high in phosphorus. Chocolate's high in phosphorus, but... Well, no, but I'm saying she's saying there's different flavors of apples. There's only one... Th there's an apple. There's different they kinds have, of apples. There's different kinds, but they are yeah, but very not different flavors. in They taste. all taste like apples. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you say flavor, I'll say kinds. Yeah. Kinds. Okay. Like there's different flavors of Chevrolets. You know, it's like the different kinds of Chevrolets. Okay, I stand corrected. Okay. Now, are you going to tell us that you brought? You were wonderful enough to bring us some of these uh, delicious-looking products. One is Nepro. Are you going to talk about this? Yeah, Lori, can we talk about yeah, Nepro? I think Nepro is a great source of uh, of protein. And it has all your vitamins, your renal vitamins in it. So mm -hmm. uh, we talked about it being a, a supplement, uh, can replace the meal, can be added. Uh, we've started on our patients who are malnourished and, 
and really can't afford supplements, we've been buying and giving to them on mm -hmm. dialysis. So we know they, they take it and, and it actually replaces the protein they're losing during dialysis. Some people can't tolerate it because of its kind of milky type substance, mm -hmm. although it's not milk. Can you put it in the freezer and make it like ice cream? <laughs> I would imagine you could. You could put a stick in the, open it up and put it in, but how you get it out. But yeah, maybe you could pour you it in something and ice cubes. And maybe, ice cubes. Uh, that would be a good idea because I love, I mean, that's we the hardest kids, part. Is those little things you pour in and put the stick mocha in and mix, take it out. You know, yeah. they have the mocha mix ice cream make it make it a swarm of mocha mix ice cream they actually have mocha mix ice cream i know yes. they do yeah. but we could get some nutrition value yeah. I, I mean mocha yeah. mix ice cream saved my life <laughs> really <laughs> when i was on dialysis because i love ice cream really and uh, mocha mix ice cream was an alternative I, yeah, that you could the have night she invited me over for dinner and she made the um you know the little coffee creamers she made coffee creamer ice cream. She poured them in the ice tray, and they're just horrible. The they're artificial horrible. creamers, right? The artificial creamers. They, I think, they're. You didn't like that. Well, I was no. trying to be creative. What no. do you know? You know. And she served them over different flavors of apples. <laughs> No and, and what about this other thing? What is this other thing you have here? Um, it's called protein shots. And I was at Costco the other day, and they were giving samples out. Yeah, this. Uh, so the we used a lot of the Nepro. Um, on the patients because it's a good supplement, but it has a lot of uh, calories. It's about oh, it 400 does. to 500 calories a shot. That little bottle shot. is 400 or 500 yeah, calories? Yeah, let's see what it says here. The writing's getting smaller and my eyes are not reading. Yeah, let's see. see if your eyes let are better. Let me see. Oh. <laughs> no. no way. You got I three old people it. here. I can't see it. Oh, well, that but, means there's no calories in it. Because <laughs> you can't see it, huh? You can't it see it. It's not someplace. there. Yeah, but it can be up to four or 500 calories. So the, for the diabetics, that's sometimes hard. So we were searching for a uh, replacement mm -hmm. that didn't have so many calories. And this company is making this uh, product called Protein Shots, which has 25 grams of protein Wow! in a liquid drink. Wow. And wow. no calories, no phosphorus, no potassium. It's and, pure protein. And what about the thing that's so popular that I see the uh, little tiny bottles? Uh, what are they called? There's Protein the shots. Prostat. There's the Prostat now, which is like... No, no, um, they sell it like at Walmart and Target, the little body... Uh, you, have, you have to be careful. The bodybuilder ones... No, these are the energy drinks. Yeah, they're, I but would you, add the, them to, you add them to your bottle of water. Is that the ones that they're like little... The vitamin, the vitamin No, water, no, it's, vitamin. it's like a uh, Red Bull without the, the sugar and the caffeine. Okay. It's, yeah. And it's like four calories. They're little uh, right. shots and you add them to your yeah, water bottle. Yeah, they're in an orange bottle. I saw them when I was at Costco too, and yeah, I didn't want them. to take it because I didn't know what was in it. Yeah, we should read the ingredients of this, but neither none of us can read, so... Um, <laughs> the print's too small. <laughs> so, uh, the, this the, this is... Uh, have you had one of these? Have you tasted it? Yeah, we tasted those. They taste like jello. Oh, delicious. And so, and do, you, do you take it by flavors. yourself? Or do you just drink it? Or you drink, do you drink it the straight. whole thing? We, we put it in the refrigerator because it tastes better cold. And when the patient has dialysis, we give them one if they don't tolerate the Nepro. So, they drink. you drink a whole one? You drink a whole one. Right and there. how much is 20? So how much protein do you need a day? How many grams of protein? I think for dialysis patients, uh, there's a lot of uh, d debate on what it is, but at least a gram per kilogram per day. So if you weigh 70 kilograms, you should try to get 70 grams of protein in a okay. day. Okay. Well, I wish kilograms. I weighed 70 kilograms. <laughs> if you weighed 100 kilograms, you need 100 grams of protein a day. 100 grams wow. of protein. Wow. Wow, that's, that's a, a lot. lot. So you would need four of those. If you did oh, nothing else. If you did nothing else. Right. Which I expensive? don't do. Are they expensive? They're a little expensive. I, I think they How retail for almost, if you buy them at Costco, they're almost $2 a, a shot. That's not too bad, and I guess. And you give these away at your dialysis unit? Well, we, we formed a nonprofit to help our poor patients on dialysis who couldn't afford these supplements because they're very expensive. And do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Oh, I'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> so we, um, in the Antelope Valley in Lancaster, we have a lot of patients who live uh, close to the poverty level and they're on dialysis. So they were malnourished, we identified. And when we started to go around and recommend supplements for them, they said, well, we just can't uh, afford them. So we got a group of uh, doctors and nurses together that formed a nonprofit, 501c3, that raises money every year and buys the supplements and gives them to the patients for free. Oh, now, that's great. can you contact the companies and get like a massive discount? 
What we did, we contacted Protein Shots, and now we order from them directly. So they don't give us a massive discount, but they give a about a 25% reduction in the and cost for retail. Is the company that makes Protein Shots, which seems to be uh, a really good supplement, um, are they owned by like Kellogg's or Procter & Gamble? or? Not yet. This one company is actually owned by a renal failure patient. And he started well, it because of Protein the shots? Protein shots, right. Is, oh, and wow. he won't give these to you? So it's a great example of a patient who was on right. dialysis, understood well, we'll the need. we'll have to interview him and figure out how he came up with yes. that. Yeah. 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 Uh, we saw that guy. He gave us, he made salsa, you know, without tomatoes in it. Yes. And he was a patient, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. everybody's Very trying clever. to find solutions, and it, it's really difficult because um, when you're on dial, it's such a small population that it's not attractive for a large, you know, company to make something for such a small population. Right. Have you seen improved outcomes in your patients since um, giving them supplements during treatment? Well, we have uh, initially. I, I think when we started, we were in five percentile in the country, wow. lower five percentile. And through our nutritional program, we were able to get up to 70 percentile. So what are you talking about? I have no idea what you're talking about. So if you look at, uh, we can compare our dialysis unit to the other 2,000 dialysis units in the country mm -hmm. in the Presenia system. So we can compare our outcomes to all the other 2,000 dialysis Clinics. units, right? Right. And at one point, we were in the lower 5 percentile. Mm -hmm. And that's of like mortality out, rate? Out or? And will that be for albumin outcomes? Okay, Thank you. albumin outcomes, not right. mortality. Okay. So it indicated that we had a very high percentage of our patients who were malnourished. Wow. So and it's because, now, I don't think of the Antelope Valley, and I must tell you, I've been to the Antelope Valley, and not once have I seen an antelope. But other than that, I have never, is that really a, a low-income area? I didn't think it was. Well, it, it is. And um, uh, a lot of the patients there uh, seem to struggle. We have a lot of patients that are on disability. We have a lot of patients there that are out of work. And um, it, it, it is. And a lot of my patients just couldn't afford it. And I think the other problem, too, uh, in, in contrast to the general population, a lot of the patients, when they go on dialysis, aren't able to work. Um, you know, some of them are, are younger, still have families. So there just aren't the resources available at home to have extra monies to pay for nutritional supplements. Right, right. So I think that's true for a lot of their diet, mm -hmm. that, that a lot of our patients diet. want to eat what the rest of their family eats. Right, beans and tortillas and cheese is a very inexpensive diet when you need high quality protein, like a well, piece. Are you saying that the people who live in Antelope Valley are Hispanic? Well, it's it's a diet, one of the beans, cheese, a lot of um, different rice. I mean, people don't consume, like, you know, good meat, good quality I protein. I think that's generally, it's expensive. Though. Yeah, I think that's generally. It's Lori has expensive. a good point because the meats, the ones we talked about, chicken and fish, are very expensive sources of protein. And if you're on a limited diet, that right. makes it harder to get those type of it's, supplements. It's easier to go to Taco Bell and go to the drive through with a, for a bean burrito. You, you can get meat at Taco Bell. Is it meat? <laughs> this is still the question we're trying to figure out. <laughs> um, you know, and it's so full of sodium because one thing we didn't talk about is sodium. But yeah, talk we, about sodium because I love sodium. I love salt too. I do too. I mean, it's just everything has. Everything that's has even salt. worse because everything has sodium in it, and it makes you thirsty. So right. you know what? We're going to bring Dr. Tuso back for another show. What? You have to go somewhere. And, uh, <laughs> and talk all about this because we could go on, I think, for a while. And Especially I think people are probably getting mic. hungry. <laughs> I think of, of what I do. Yes. This is the most important thing we can help our patients with because they, like you say, they really struggle with it. They just want to be normal and eat normal. And Absolutely. when you start cutting out the sodium, and potassium and the phosphorus and trying to get high protein, what are you left, left right. with? That's what I'm eat. saying. That's, that's what I was saying before. You got to watch your potassium. You got to watch your phosphorus and you got to watch your sodium. So we got bouillon, which is too high in sodium. Too high in sodium. Right. right. And so what Dialyzed what is potatoes. We got dialyzed there. potatoes and jello. So, uh, you know. <laughs> and so, you got to worry about your fluid. <laughs> that's right. Right. And you got to watch your fluid. So. I know. It's impossible. It's, it really is impossible. It's, it is uh, almost. a very difficult diet. And but it's so, doable. I did it for 12 years. Well, I, so I still find it impossible. So tell us where um, we can learn about your um, nonprofit organization, and uh, we'd love to have you back for another show. Well, it'd be so. an honor for me to 
be with the two of you because you're very entertaining for one. And I think you really have a pulse on what the patients are feeling and, and need to hear. The nonprofit organization is called the Foundation to Improve Renal Nutrition. And um, Fern, F I R N. Correct. Yes. Well, like, Fernav.org. Yes. So it's, it's Fern A V. Fern with an I, not an E. So it's F I R N A V.org. Now, what's the A V? Animal Valley. Oh, that's where without, you the the without the antelope. That's right. Without, have you ever seen an antelope there? Just on the billboard a, a of picture. the mall. A yeah, picture exactly. Yeah. A picture. Now, Antelope Valley, it's like, you know, I live on Bubbling Brook Drive. There's no Bubbling Brook where I live. There used to be antelopes. There used to be? Yeah, there's no Bubbling Brook, though. We can control our own destiny. We can take charge of our health and ask questions about our medical options. We can form partnerships with our health care team. We can take steps towards self-improvement. We can be sensitive to the impact of our disease on our family. We can sing, dance, laugh, and enjoy our lives. We can appreciate today and look forward to tomorrow. We can help and support our fellow patients. We can pursue our hopes and dreams. We can make a difference. 